hello again, guys. And and after only one night in Belize, because I got to the border and really just wanted to get into Guatemala and get to some of the big historic ruin sites. Um, uh, took a little uh, track out from um, from uh, San Ignacio. Um, went for, only went for a few miles. Cut the cars on the road, as you can see. <laughs> um, but it was a bit of fun, and out of here I'm coming in and and going to turn off, hopefully onto the main road. I think I, I think I got this right, this one. Yeah, and um, so. Yeah, so I'm basically only about 20, 30 miles from the um, from the border, and uh, it was it was I've got to say, you want to plan this border because it is quite confusing. Um, you're basically driving through a town, um, and I I did a, I think I did a couple of loops around because I didn't know where where it was where the border was. Uh, I know knew it was before a bridge. Uh, but couldn't uh, couldn't quite work out how to actually get to it. I could see it, but I couldn't get there. Um, so I had to do a few loops around. Um, but uh, basically, I was heading to a place called Flores in uh, Guatemala, and um, the border the border crossing um, the border crossing is uh, is a, a, a place. I think it's called um, Melchor de Mincos. Just giving a little bit of a donation. You, you see that a fair bit along the way. Um, some, sometimes you see that when they put a they put a rope across the road and you base you know they're just locals trying to get some money out of people. Um, sometimes they're protesting something. You know, most of the time you you just fly on through. Um, I'm not I'm not a big fan of people forcing me to give them money. Um, but most of the time you know it's fine. And, when you've got a couple of bit, bit of extra change, like I hate ca carrying change around with me. Um, it's just it ends up if you if you if you if you kept all the change you'd have, you'd have a, a whole backpack full of change. It ends up weighing a fair bit. So you're basically best to get rid of as much change as you can when you stop for little eat spots along the way. Um, but yeah, this this was um, a little bit of a tricky border. Um, so this this is basically. Um, um, getting out of San, uh, getting into San Ignacio and getting into the border now. Lots of topes along the way, lots of speed humps, um, and uh, so it was so steamy and hot too. Um, this is probably one of the hottest border crossings I had to do. And you know, when you've got all your gear on and you're going quite slow, there's a lovely river on the right side. Um, but when you're going quite slow and you've got lots of gear on, you uh, you do get pretty hot pretty quickly. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the border crossing, again, always, always have copies of your driver's license, your, um, your registration, your title. Um, you should always, I always had five, six, 10 copies of each. Um, it does weigh you down a little bit more. It's a little bit of extra weight, I know, but uh, it's always good to have extra copies of each. It's also good if you, uh, before you cross a border, if you can, um, I mean, you should have the, some, some money from the country that you're in, you're in. So any of the little fees, exit fees or anything like that, you might have to pay usually a dollar here, $15 there, um, uh, should be covered. However, the, um, the other thing you've got to do, and this is, this is basically right at the border, you can see my bike parked. This is coming into Guatemala. Uh, this, the, you, I parked my bike right out the front. Um, I just left this run for a little bit so you can see. So I've got I've got eyesight to the bike. Otherwise, and, and then you'll see some money changes there on the left side there. Um, so when you're getting into a new country, usually uh, 30, 50 US dollars worth of whatever the local currency in, just to just to be able to get your bike to weed across the border, fuel up if you need to, and any of the ex any of the little things like in Guatemala, it's the process is. Get your um, stamp in. Um, get your uh, uh, so you get your passport stamped in, and then um, and then you've got to get your import documents worked out. This had a number of stations. They directed me each way, each where I ha ha where I had to uh, go. But getting out of Belize was thirty seven dollars fifty US, um, 
and then basically get a, you get a, an exit stamp on your passport and then you go to the door on the left and you, you walk through it and you go to the import and you get your import permit cancelled. Um, so when you get to Guatemala, you have to get your the fumigation done again. Cost me it cost me 14, um, uh, 14 uh, uh, quetzals, quetzals, whatever you want to call it. About, that's about two dollars. Uh, get and make always make sure you get a receipt for it. And then you basically head to immigration, get your uh, get your stamp stamped in, and pay a, a little fee, uh, just a few dollars. And then um, you also have to. Um, you have to pay $21, uh, $21 at the cashier and then you go back with the permit, you get all the copies, you, you've got all your copies of your passport, they, they'll direct you through everything. It was quite it was quite confusing because they, they kept telling me to go from one place to another and you can see just ahead, this, oh, this is where the bridge is and you've got to pay a bridge tax which is 10 GQ which is only a few US dollars, got a handful of US dollars. So you, basically you've got to pay 21 US dollars uh, uh, tax and then um, a tax fee, and then you got to pay 10 to get across the bridge. A few other people told me that they got to put across the bridge and didn't pay. I don't know how, they've got a booth there, but um, I got stopped, so, you know, just pay. But I, I suppose if you went through, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to do anything, I wouldn't imagine. So yeah, this is Guatemala. Uh, one of the strange things about Guatemala is they sort of do roadworks in patches. So one team goes in and cuts the road apart and leaves a big gaping hole. And then they place a water bottle where the, where the hole is. And then another team crew comes through later and, um, and fills in the holes. Wouldn't say that's a very, a, a very sensible approach to, uh, uh, to that. That's the, where the border crossing again it was so hot. I was just sweating buckets the whole time. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, it, was, it was quite strange and there was a lot of animals on the side of the road too. So again, just caution when you're riding. When you, when you see animals on the side of the road, just friggin' don't, don't be going the full max speed limit. You, you, you're only gonna ask for trouble. You know, you startle one animal and they dart out, dart out in front of you. If it's only a small animal, you're gonna crush it. But if it's a bigger animal, you're, gonna, you're probably gonna crush it, but you're also gonna come off the bike. Um, just the nature of it, you know, there's like dogs and stuff everywhere. But Guatemala was you know, a spectacularly beautiful place. Um, again, you know, in the in the or in and around the town was rubbish. It really frustrated me because so many beautiful places, and then you you go through, and then there's just rubbish laying on the road, right side of the road, everywhere, and it's it's pretty uh, pretty disconcerting, you know. Um, but yeah, look, uh, border crossings, yeah, I, I got a little bit of a helper um, and just gave him a few dollars, this young kid, he was really good. And he basically told me the stops and then the, the last one, helpers are good if they can get you to the front of stuff. And there were, then there was a long line and I got to the front of that. Well, I didn't, he just went there and did, uh, paid the tax for me. Um, and, that, and he just went to the front of the line and obviously he slips a few dollars to someone there as well. So um, you got to play the game. But you, as you can see, it's lush, you know, um, but it was very, very hot uh, in the north of Guatemala. And so I'm heading to a place called uh, Flores, which is, um, which is near um, these ruins, uh, lots of different ruins. And um, I, I decided to stay a couple of nights and then do one night of camping near the ruins, uh, which didn't turn out too good for me because I ended up having to do it at night, <laughs> which wasn't the smartest thing to do, but I'll try to speak about that. Uh, I went. I basically decided that I was uh, going to camp outside of the ruins, outside of the national park, and uh, and I had this road that connected to the main road. So I thought I'll go down this road, and one of the gates was locked on the road, and I ended up waiting there a couple of hours for somebody to come in and help me, and um, and uh, uh, to open the gate for me so they couldn't get round. And I just basically sat down for a while, and I ended up falling asleep for a little while, and um, then I. Um, uh, then I set up a camp at night, and uh, and which was a bit of a challenge. And then I um I got going again uh, the next morning and joined the main main highway again. Um, but yeah, this this area was fantastic. I mean, the ruins Tiacuan. I'm going to pronounce it better in the next video once I learn what it is. Um, roads really open, not a lot of traffic. Uh, still a few trucks around and stuff like that, but. Um, it was 
you know, anytime you get into a new country, you're expecting something new. And the difference was between Belize, Belize had been over, I mean, it looked like a lot of their forests had been cut down at some stage, you know, maybe during the British rule or whatever, I don't know, but they just didn't seem to have as many, um, uh, as many natural forests as uh, what Guatemala, Guatemala was just thick and dense, you know, and hot and steamy too. So this is the beginning of November, it's still getting towards the end of the wet season. Um, so there was a bit of rain still around, but I had a really no, I, I'm trying to think, I don't, don't know if I've got any, any rain in the whole time I was in Guatemala. I'm trying to think, I don't think I did. Um, but really good roads for the most part, except for when, they, when I ran into some workers and everyone always waving at you. As soon as they see an adventure bike, people just, you know, they'll, you know, most people will just stop and wave or they'll come up and they'll ask you. They always ask the same questions. What size is your engine? Um, where are you coming from? Where are you going to? Um, I had a kangaroo on the side of my bike, so they, uh, they loved that. Um, and uh, yeah, so just generally interested. You can, you know, you, you could get annoyed if you wanted to get annoyed, you know, if you're that sort of person. But I just think that, you know, anyone who shows an interest and is, is nice about it, if they're trying to sell you shit, well, then it's a different story. But um, I found it was really good and I, I, I enjoyed it highly. Didn't really get annoyed the, the whole trip. Um, the only people that really will try to annoy you are the people at border crossings. I didn't experience this border crossing, but plenty of others. Whenever they're fighting to get, uh, fighting to get your business, you know you've got to be very wary of them. So the one things I, whenever I got to a border, and if I if I was going to get any help, um, I would just say I would tell them exactly what I wanted. That they're not going to be touching my passport. They're not going to be holding my passport. They're not going to be touching any of that. They're going to be helping me and I tell them what fee I'm going to pay them. And they've got to tell me whether they're helping me on both sides of the border or just one side of the border. Okay. Don't let them take control of you. They'll, they'll try and take control and, um, and, and say, oh, you've got to do this side, then you've got to pay that fee. No, no. You say, you, you say I'm paying all the fees because if, they'll pretend there's other fees that don't exist. And uh, I got ripped off once, but not by much, but I, got, I just got sick of the guy and I just said, oh, yeah, just take $10 and get the F out of my life. Um, a couple of other ones, um, I ended up ditching them halfway through when they, then as soon as I said, as soon as you try to screw me, and I, and I, basically I knew what my fees were before each border. I knew approximately what my fees were each border. As soon as they tried to screw me, I told them that they're out. They're no longer, I, I told them at the start, the minute you try to take any extra money from me, I know exactly how much I've got to pay. The minute you try to take any extra money from me, you're no longer going to be working for me. And I had one guy at a border where I met up at, with another adventure guy and we're chatting and this guy at the border had to go up the bench and go, hey, no, mate, he's mine. And I just said, that's it, mate, go away. I mean, I'm chatting to this guy. He thought, he thought this guy was going to help me and he was, he's going to help me and tell me where to go to get the next, you know, because in some border crossings, you've got to get a ticket to go to the office. So you've got to go pay like a dollar, it's just a scam. Um, I don't know whether it's just a local scam that they've worked out, well, we can get an extra dollar out of everyone who travels past here. Just go to this thing and get a ticket, then come back to the office. Um, just a weird process, but um, yeah. They, they'll, they'll probably be the only people that frustrate you, but I always had a prerequisite. I, I wanted the guy who could best understand me and uh, understand my English because my Spanish was very poor and didn't get much better the whole trip to be honest. Um, but the, um, what I basically said is, okay, and then once I settled on one person, I asked the other people if they could please step aside. And then I basically said to them, these are the rules. Do you understand the rules? If you try to break the rules at any time, me and you are no longer doing business. Um, and that, you know, most of, most of them are fairly fine. I wasn't that mean to them when I was saying it. I was just saying to them, I know exactly what things are going to cost, you know. Uh, I'm going to drink here. She didn't seem very happy, did she? Maybe because I wasn't getting off my bike. It was just so hot there and you just get whatever you can get her. And she was nice, big smile. Um, yeah, you'll see a lot of these all along the road. You can get fruit. Um, the, the only problem with the fruit is it's usually warm, you know. 
Um, it's still nice, but it's just warm because it's out in the sun. Um, but uh, you can get a really great meals on the side of the road pretty much anywhere. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. I mean, I just love Guatemala, you know. Guatemala, El Salvador was spectacular. Uh, just a beautiful place, beautiful people, and no one there, which, which made it even better for me. Because <laughs> um, there's nothing like when you're actually doing an adventure ride and, and all that is is having open roads. There's nothing like it. It just makes you feel so, I don't know, uh, invigorated in life. But you've got to, the, the thing about it is, you know, you've got to pick your lines. I usually sat on this third, you know, just on the on the inside third. Um, and you've, you've really got to concentrate because they're potholes. There are a lot of potholes that you just don't expect and some of them are a lot worse than others, you know. Um, so you just got to have your wits about you. Make, make, always making sure that you're, um, that you're well hydrated. I've got a, a climb in my backpack. I used to put some ice. I've got a, 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 a water bottle, a, a, what do you call them? Um, uh, a water pack in the backpack with a tube to my mouth. And I'd pack it with a little bit of ice in the morning, put some water in it, and um, and usually, and with this, I have a climb backpack, um, and even by the afternoon, it was still reasonably cool. It wasn't wasn't warm, you know, so it kept it kept it pretty nice. So just about six or seven ice cubes in it, um, and away you go. I mean, even you know, I mean, if you if you're really if you're really hot and you really want some, you know, get some sugar and you can put some coke in there if you want, or you can put some Fanta or whatever you, whatever rocks your boat, some Gatorade or whatever. I'm not a big fan of Gatorade. I'm just as just as bad for you as uh, Coca-Cola or Fanta or any of that sort of crap. Despite what they say and how many how many of the greatest athletes in the world just happen to be also drinking Gatorade, um, but. Uh, yeah, I sort of stay away from it. It's not that nice a drink anyway. You know? um, but yeah, so basically I, I, went, I, I went to stay at a place um, in Flores called the Las Lagunas Boutique Hotel. And it was, it was no, it's normally a very expensive hotel. It's like a five-star hotel uh, with swimming pools, lagoons outside it. Like my, uh, my bungalow had a, had, a, uh, had a spa on it. Not that I used it. It's too bloody hot for a spa. Um, but the swimming pool was beautiful and there was no one there, you know, and it was because of such a quiet time of year, it was like I got a really good deal. I think I paid about $112 a night or something like that. And normally it's about $300 a night. So I stayed there uh, one night, uh, two nights, one night, one night there and then I camped one night after after the ruins, which were spectacular. I'll talk about them in the next video. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, the food the food here in Guatemala is pr pretty much the same uh, as Mexico. Uh, a lot of tacos, um, empanadas, a few not as not as much fried stuff. You don't get the fried stuff until you get down into uh, down into South America. They do fry stuff, but the the fresh stuff is always you know they they make tacos or wraps uh, and stuff like that. And they're freaking cheesy they're good. Uh, <laughs> um, I lost so you know I lost a, a fair bit of weight actually in Central America and put it all back back on again in, in South America and I tried to I tried to as much as I possibly could eat local foods when I stayed in hotels sometimes I just ended up having a hamburger or something like that because there wasn't really much on offer uh, uh, hostels you've got to find your own stuff but. Uh, yeah, these are the, this type of road, the dual lane highways, even though they're safer, they're not as much fun as these roads. Um, and, you know, I can uh, I, I can ride like this all day long. I mean, I did, I, some, some days I did 12 hours, you know, um, and didn't, sometimes I didn't go that far. Uh, just, it's just that I, um, I, I just uh, took my time and had a great day. And, you know, sometimes you go past a vineyard or, or a plantation and you just go and, and there's a big massive beautiful driveway in there so I just go and, go and park, drive up their beautiful driveway and park in there. Nearly every small town has has uh, little market shops and stuff like that and, uh, uh, but there's a, just every small town has somebody selling some fresh fresh food on the side of the road and it's I'm nev I never got disappointed by it. You know, never, no one ever tried to rip me off. Everyone was always friendly. Um, 
I, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough of having street food rather than going to a restaurant um, or eating at your hotel. Um, and I've, I've got a pretty strong stomach, so, you know, I've been to like places like India and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure I stepped, stopped up here too. There's a lot, beautiful little place here. A little plantation, there's a guy up on the hill. And but, uh, yeah, I like stopping at these. So, Anywhere you can stop, where you can uh, you can lay down in the grass and just have a bit of a rest is a is a good spot, you know. Um, I think that's getting into Flores, getting close to Flores there. One of the they're one of the, you know, a lot of little bridges like this, really cool little bridges. Um, and I think that's the place that I was staying at there. Um, yeah, that's actually I think that's just at, in just inside of Guatemala there. Another gorgeous little bridge. I love those sort of things. Um, you, 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 as you go further south, you'll just see so many beautiful, beautiful bridges. These are some of the army guys. You'll see there was a lot of armed forces, uh, military in Guatemala, um, on the on the on the sides of the road. A lot of military checkpoints. I, I, I didn't. I don't even think I got stopped in one checkpoint. Maybe one in Guatemala, but that's all. Uh, they usually just waved, waved you through, or waved at you, said hello. But there's a lot. Here's another truck that I'm coming up to now. Uh, usually a bunch of guys in, all armed to the teeth in the back of it. Uh, I don't know who they're trying to get. You know, <laughs> I'm sure they have issues. But they always wanted you to gun it when you went past them. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. So the the this this journey it, it took me it took me quite. a it took me quite a while, but I, uh, I only, um, I only, only went like 140 miles for the whole day, um, and that's what's good. You know, if you plan your border crossings, you should always stay somewhere nearby the border, so you can get there nice and early. Doesn't always guarantee that there's not going to be people at the border, but it's it's better than going. Well, most places you can't go around lunchtime because uh, some some of they're short staff, so you can be guaranteed that you're going to be waiting around a long time if you go around lunchtime um, when they have their siestas. Um, but you know, staying somewhere close to the border before you before you enter the border is always a smart move. Get your get, make sure you got all your paperwork in order. Make sure you've got your um, your uh, some at least a little bit of local currency left. Whatever you got left over once you get to the border, exchange it for the new currency as you cross the border. It, in most, nearly all except for I think Argentina and Chile were about the only few few countries that I did. That, but there weren't money changes on the border. Um, they all pretend, a lot of them pretend they're official. They've got some sort of badges, but I don't don't know if they're actually official. Yeah. Um, I think I might have kind of done a wrong turn there. Not positive. No? Okay. Sometimes when you get up to a fork in the road and you look at your GPS and you're, and you're thinking, yeah, it doesn't say anything like this. Um, and you end up having to sort of think about which which uh, which which angle you go at. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I stayed at this place. It was probably a few miles off the off the main highway. Uh, it was right in the rainforest, right on a lagoon. Really pretty. Um, it it uh, you know it was a good station to. You know, to uh, to head out to other places, and I really enjoyed it. And sometimes it's nice just to. I used to sprinkle, you know, staying in hostels, camping, and then staying in a couple of nice places. Um, and it doesn't doesn't hurt if you've got the budget to do it. It doesn't hurt to have a couple of nights. I usually used to have a better better workout that I was going to spend about a hundred dollars a night at, at uh, hotels when I was staying in hotels. Um, if I stayed more than three days anywhere. Um, See, you can see the hole in the road there. Um, if I stayed more than three days anywhere, I always, um, I, I used to try and get Airbnbs because you could usually get a really nice place for $50, $60 a night and um, and you wouldn't have to, uh, uh, $50, $60 a night and you wouldn't have to um, you know, deal with all the crap you have to deal with in hotels. Uh, I have pretty good Wi-Fi Mo through most of Central America, um, South America became uh, a different story. But um, I use this speed test app on my phone, 
So if I book a hotel and then the hotel says they've got high speed internet and then I get there and they don't, I give them a friggin' bit of a survey. Not, I'm nice about it, but I tell them you cannot advertise that you've got high speed internet at this speed. And sometimes they bring in a, a, a modem into my room and another, my own personal router um, because you're paying for it and, you mar and, and, and they shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. You, you would get away with having um, you know, half, only half electricity, half or well, quarter power electricity, you know, and they seem to think that, oh, well, people won't mind with Wi-Fi, but more and more people are traveling now and, and, uh, and staying in hotels and they want to be upload their photos to their, their social media or whatever. And if you can't even upload a photo, it takes half an hour to upload one photo. And especially something like Instagram, if you want to upload a video to Instagram, if you if your upload speed is not, not good enough, you know, and, and basically, you know, the um, FCC in, in the US state that 25 megabyte a second is a minimum for, for high speed internet. And maybe only a handful of places on my whole trip I got that, hotels that, that, that advertise high speed. Most of the time you get about between three and five megabytes a second and, and maybe one, possibly two megabyte a second upload. Which would, which would basically mean to, to upload a, um, like once you, you shoot a video like this, this video might be one, two gigabytes by the end of it. Um, you, you would take you all night the next day to upload a video that size. So then you've got to compress it and you know, you end up losing quality on that because of, because of those sort of, uh, because of those things. So um, whenever you stay anywhere and if the internet's not good enough, make sure you, you tell them that this is not good enough and you're going to write a bad review and always mention that the Wi-Fi was bad for the next traveler if it was bad because um, I always look on reviews for what they what they say about the Wi-Fi um, whether they say it's any good or whether they say it's bad if they if they say it's bad I just get don't stay at that place so that cost them money and that's the only time people react is when it costs them money um, I mean I stayed in a in a in a campsite and I was pick across the road, pick it. Um, I stayed in a campsite, and I was maybe 50 yards from the main office, and I was getting like 50 megabyte a second download speeds in a campsite. These people, and, and there was about three or four campsites nearby, and this one was packed with people, uh, and all the others were barely, barely filled, uh, barely they were pretty much empty. What a difference it makes! You know that that probably means an extra 10, 20, 30 thousand dollars a year for that business. And they spend an extra maybe five hundred dollars a year on good internet, maybe a thousand. Makes perfect sense if you're if you're in business, you know, because then you can advertise that you've got the highest speed internet, and you'll get every young traveller. As long as you're around the same price, you can be a few dollars extra a night. As long as you're around the same price as the competitors, you'll get all the bookings, you know. And of course, you've got to have a decent premises and all that. But um. Uh, I'm pretty sure just up here I end up on my turn off into uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the place again the the, the Laguna um, Hotel which which was pretty good yeah but um, when you, when when I do research for hotels I look I look at all the comments and if anyone has negative comments on the, about the Wi-Fi I just think, uh, avoid the place and if on Airbnb. Here's my turn off here. Uh, if on Airbnb, um, the the other thing I would definitely do if if you're going to be on Airbnb, um, always write a note to them saying, um, "Can you please let me know what your Wi-Fi wi speed is? I've got to do business while I'm travelling, and I can't have internet that's not working correctly." And they'll usually respond and say, "Yeah, no, the internet's fine. It's good internet. It's like 12 megabytes a second." And that speed test app, you get in there, you connect the Wi-Fi, and you test the speed. And will tell you what the download speed and upload speed is of your Wi-Fi connection. Um, one thing I'm going to definitely take on my next trip is uh, a Google Wi-Fi router. So basically, then I only have to hook into their Wi-Fi, get the close, the best signal close by. You'll find that here's here's a security guy. Um, you'll find that they also have you'll, you'll find all the security guys have shotguns as well and stuff like that. Um, Always very friendly. I don't know what they're going to do if someone raids them. I mean, having a shotgun is not going to make much of a difference. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the road up to the hotel. Pretty cool.
This was, this was the sort of road I had to take when I had to go at night too. It was a single track, you know, uh, barely barely wide enough to fit one person. That's one of the, uh, uh, the team members' house. Quite a pretty setting. There's a couple of little houses along the way and then the hotel opened up around the corner. It was a beautiful, beautiful hotel. I've got, I think I've got some photos at the end here for you. But I think there might have been two or three people staying, staying at that the whole hotel, maybe 20, 30 cabins all up. And you know, the, you can hear the, the uh, howler monkeys at night. I think they're called howler monkeys, they make a huge noise. Golf carts for getting around. They were really good to people here, you know. where you just start sweating. Yeah, I've just got my bike serviced too back here and um, it takes me a long to get off the bike. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, like I lost my guards on my off my exhaust pipe and uh, didn't even know it until I actually put my leg over, on, over the touch the exhaust on one day when it was hot and I ended up burning the hell out of my leg, uh, which you end up getting used to when you ride. So now you basically, yeah, you, you, you sit there, you unpack your bike and then you go and park it and you head into the hotel and the first thing I did was get stripped, jump in the pool. I used to wear, uh, whenever I was riding near the beach, I used to wear my, um, my bathing suit underneath, or what do you want to call it, we call it togs in Australia, um, underneath and, um, and so I can you know, stop off, take my boots off, have a relax um, and then jump in the water somewhere on the beach, only usually if it was secluded there, so that's the, the, the balcony. It's one of the swimming pools, all pretty cool. So yeah, um, as always, guys, any questions or comments below, and uh, happy to happy to answer any questions about about the trip. Uh, hope you have a great day, and uh, we'll talk again soon.